Welcome to Popcorn Playback. Today we have another movie recap for you. But before we get to the storyline, like and subscribe for more recaps and have a great day. The movie starts in a peaceful forest in Finland. A young girl named Aelia is running away from some men, and she's surprised to realize these men are her own family. She tries to escape, but they catch her before she can get away. The scene then changes to a busy bank. There's a man named Rex in the crowd, and we're not sure why he's there. We do know he's really excited to see someone named Maddie, who he likes a lot. Suddenly, some robbers burst into the bank and create chaos. They hurt the security guard and disrupt the calm atmosphere. Rex sees a gun hidden in a woman's bag and thinks about getting involved, even though he knows it's risky. As the tension rises and the threat gets serious, Rex struggles to stay calm. Something surprising happens. The woman's bag with the hidden gun falls into Rex's lap, and it changes everything. In the next scene, we're in a courtroom, and everyone is confused. The judge is suing Rex for what he did during the bank robbery, which is strange because he's the one who stopped the robbers and saved many lives. Despite all that, Rex gets an eight-year prison sentence. Jump ahead eight years, and we see Rex as a free man. He's looking at a magazine with his face on it. The magazine still calls him a hero from eight years ago, and he's famous because of it. But when he gets out of prison, he doesn't face rejection. Instead, he's always in the public eye, with reporters in the media following him closely. All this attention makes Rex feel uneasy. At this point, a different side of Rex emerges, driven by intense emotions. He stands up, throws his desk as if he's angry at some imaginary group, and uses this as a way to release all the stress and emotions he's been holding in. Even though most people see him as a hero, there are still some who are mad at him for his brave actions and call him crazy. To find peace, Rex talks to his friend and tells him how frustrated he is with the not-so-normal life he's living because of all the attention. Then, he makes a big decision to leave the city and start a new life in Finland. What's interesting is that he chooses Finland because of something small that happened while he was in prison. He playfully shot a spitball, and it ended up landing in Finland. The scene changes to a forested area, where a man is running away from some relentless pursuers. Surprisingly, these people chasing the man in the forest look exactly like the ones we saw at the start of the movie. It suggests that all these events are happening in Finland, the very place Rex is going to. The man's desperate escape ends abruptly when a scary creature grabs him, and the forest echoes with terrifying sounds. Now, back to Rex, he's at the airport, and there are a lot of curious onlookers who want to film everything he does. In the chaos, he notices a husband and wife discreetly watching him. With all the commotion and cameras around, Rex gets really annoyed. He decides to hide in the restroom, but when he goes in, he finds the husband of the strange couple already inside, staring at him without any shame while he's trying to use the restroom. When he goes back to his seat, the wife of that mysterious couple gives him a disturbing smile. Finally, Rex arrives in Finland and waits for a taxi, thinking about the new life he's starting in this foreign place. While he's waiting, a taxi driver watches him from a distance and then pulls up right in front of Rex. Once Rex is inside the taxi, the driver releases a gas that makes Rex lose consciousness and eventually pass out. In another scene, we see what seems like a normal family getting ready for dinner. They don't seem sinister at all, but the surprise comes when we see that Rex has already been kidnapped and tied up in their basement. In this intense moment, Rex's hands are tied, and he's missing one of his legs. He tries to scream, but someone inside him, like a voice representing his inner thoughts, tells him to be quiet. This inner voice is like a part of Rex's mind, but it's cunning and a bit twisted. It plays a crucial role in Rex's life and his chances of surviving. This inner voice can look at what's happening and think about it clearly. After checking out the situation, it figures out that the mysterious couple from the airport is the reason why Rex is in this terrible situation. 
As Rex feels really hopeless about his situation, his inner voice can't stand the torment anymore and starts coming up with a plan to escape. But because Rex's hands are tied so tightly, his inner voice has to think of other ways to help them survive. According to his inner voice, if the kidnapper suddenly shows up, they should pretend to be unconscious. They look around the basement and see a bunch of bicycles, which makes them think that the kidnappers are a family. At the same time, all the family members have gone upstairs for the night, except for the youngest one, Olavi. He's still awake and curious about their newest victim. Rex, still trying to bite through the rope with his teeth, watches as the young boy decides to go into the basement where Rex is held. But sadly, Rex can't undo the thick rope. And as the boy enters the room, Rex pretends to be unconscious, knowing that the person coming in is just a child. In a desperate bid to secure his escape, Rex hatches a plan to use the young boy, Olavi, as leverage. He tries to convince Olavi, but then he strikes the boy in the face with his amputated leg, using his thighs to immobilize him. A short while later, Olavi's sister, Elia, realizes her brother is missing and decides to search for him in the basement. Shockingly, it's revealed that Elia is the same young girl who had tried to escape from a group of men earlier, indicating that her family is responsible for Rex's current situation. Rex, still threatening to harm the boy if Elia tries anything against him, accidentally lets go of Olavi in a panic, putting his escape plan in danger. When the family finds Olavi unconscious in the room, they rush him to the hospital, and the mother thinks Elia hurt her brother and slaps her. This incident shows that Elia is different from her family and might be a chance for Rex to escape. This chance becomes stronger when Elia smiles and fantasizes about being married to Rex, showing an instant attraction to him. With her family at the hospital, Elia goes downstairs to tend to Rex's amputated leg. She shares her feelings with him and starts explaining her family's history of kidnapping people to feed her cannibalistic older brother, who has a disorder that makes him crave human flesh. Elia also reveals her struggles to escape her family's clutches and her subsequent imprisonment in a wooden cage built by her father. After sharing her story, Elia starts to genuinely feel sorry for Rex and leaves a knife on the floor, subtly encouraging him to free himself. Rex manages to get the knife and tries to cut the rope. At that moment, Elia's three brothers suddenly show up, and it's clear they have violent intentions. Thinking fast, Rex pretends to be unconscious, successfully diverting their murderous plans. His inner voice is really angry and wants to get rid of the family members. It's becoming clear that this cannibalistic family made a big mistake by kidnapping Rex. The family members notice that Rex's leg has been bandaged, which raises their suspicion, and they start looking for Elia in her room. However, Elia stays hidden in the basement until her brother comes to take her upstairs. Rex is injected with a substance that makes him laugh uncontrollably. The scene then goes back eight years when Rex was fighting the bank robbers and used brutal tactics. His inner voice took over at that time, helping him become a hero in the eyes of onlookers while trying to save his lover, Maddie. However, Maddie was scared because Rex didn't seem to care about the potential casualties. After the robber released Maddie, Rex, driven by his ego, impulsively shot the robber. Tragically, the robber's gun misfired, and a bank employee hiding in a nearby cupboard lost their life. As a result, Rex was sentenced to eight years in prison for seeming to value his own desires over other people's lives. Maddie couldn't wait for his release and decided to end their relationship. Back to the present. Rex wakes up only to find the psychopath in the middle of amputating his leg. In a desperate act of self-defense, Rex kicks the psychopath, causing him to step back for a moment to get an anesthetic. Seeing his chance, Rex tries to free himself by cutting the rope binding his hands with a knife Elia left for him. When the psychopath comes back, Rex quickly stabs the knife into the psychopath's ear. With no time to waste, Rex looks for tools and weapons to aid his escape and fortunately finds a suitable tool. In the next scene, 
He uses a golf club that's attached to his leg to gather the strength needed to climb to the upper floor. In the climax of the story, Rex's inner voice guides him to rescue Aelia from the house. As he walks out of the place, Rex thinks about what he and his inner voice have decided to do next. When both parents return home from the hospital, they're shocked to see the blood stains all over their house. To their surprise, their children are still asleep. They wake up the kids and scold them for letting Rex escape. Worried that Rex might come back with the police, the parents plan to move, but their plan is doomed to fail. Little do they know, Rex is hiding under the table. He uses a nail gun to systematically eliminate each family member. However, when he tries to shoot the mother, the nail bullets run out, forcing him to hit her in the head with the golf club attached to his amputated leg. Seeing the horrifying scene, the son tries to attack Rex, but he's quickly killed with a knife, meeting his end. At the same time, Aelia takes care of her mother, who has just woken up. Despite the gruesome events, they still don't have their freedom because they have to face Aelia's older cannibal brother, who's a monstrous figure. He comes down the stairs, setting the stage for a final showdown between Rex and the cannibal. In a fierce battle, Rex manages to hold onto the refrigerator door, only to find a piece of his own leg inside. He's relieved and takes this chance to thrust his preserved leg into the cannibal's mouth. When the ordeal is finally over, Rex and Aelia decide to start a new life together and go back to America. In a later scene, Rex and Aelia are seen having a good time with their friends. However, things take a turn when one of their friends shows interest in Rex and Aelia becomes jealous. In a revealing moment, it becomes clear that Aelia has a similar alter ego to Rex as she daydreams about hurting the woman who is making her jealous. This shared tendency suggests that Rex and Aelia are well matched because they both have almost identical alter egos. Meanwhile, in a different place, the youngest child from Aelia's family, Olav, has recovered from his injury and now wants to get revenge for the deaths of his family members. That's all form this movie. Thank you for watching.